What's going on, guys? And welcome in to the Benches Clear podcast. Where we cover the best rivalry in all of sports. I'm Jesse Gutierrez, and I cover the San Francisco Giants side. And that's the end of the show, guys. Close it out. We have nothing else to talk about, and we are done. There's an election or something coming up. I'm Tyler <laughs> Coe, and I represent the side of the 2020 World Series champion, Los Angeles Dodgers. I never thought I would be able to say that. I never thought it I either. just fucking did. We fucking did it. <laughs> 2020 World Series champion. Yeah, and we're I know you're talk- hurting, Jesse. I know uh, you're it's, hurting. it's literally the worst thing. Like, like, 2020 fucking sucks. I hate it. Yeah, the Dodgers won the 2020 World Series. I... I I'm still kind of confused on what I should do with myself. You know, I spent $600 on merch. I've watched post game interviews a million times. I've watched the entire game again. I just don't really know what to do with myself, but, but let us not forget who predicted this world series outcome. Did anyone, you know, do it? Yes. If you know me, yes. If you don't know me, no. Because July 22nd, If you listen to this podcast, you do know him and you know us and we're great friends. Yes. Whatever. (laughs) July 22nd, 2020. I said, I looked at the date that we posted it. (laughs) I said, what was the day before the season started? I said the Dodgers would win the 2020 World Series in six games against the Tampa Bay Rays. And that's exactly what fucking happened. So I'm not saying I'm a genius because that's up for everyone else to decide, but I'm sure you'll come to the logical conclusion of me being a genius. That's pretty much all I have to say. The rest, you know, we'll, we'll get into it in the interview, but I just wanted to make that emphatically clear before we started. There there was another thing you said on that day. I don't know if it was that day or the day after the Giants would only win 20 games and you would bet me Chipotle and then I won and then you still didn't give me my shit. Well, that's because I just spent $600 on t-shirts and hoodies and flags. (laughs) He said, I'm going to get back to you on that. Uh, Hey, if I could pay you with my credit card, I would. (laughs) Well, you can't and you suck. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about the World Series all fucking episode. So sorry, Giants fans. I know you're probably not going to listen, but I, I appreciate you guys all season for sticking it with all me. you get. So we're going to have a great Giants guest, and you're going to be very excited. But we do got to talk about all episode World Series stuff. And we're going to talk about it where basically Tyler's just going to be mm, all day with our guest. <laughs> and now welcome to the Benches Cleared podcast. Our friend, Eric, the Duke of Sports, Sklar. Eric, you're the host of the TSK podcast show. Uh, yes. Thanks for coming on, man. How, how are you feeling? I already know the answer, but <laughs> how, how do you feel? How have you felt these last couple of days? Better than Jesse, I'm assuming. Oh, I'm assuming better than Jesse, yes. Yeah. Uh, no one likes I remember my rival. first World Series championship. Oh, hey, fuck you. Listen, man, it's, it's been a long time coming. It's... <laughs> It's been a crazy 48 hours. I mean, yeah. it's I'm, – I'm 26 years old. I've never seen a World Series from my favorite team. Before. Yeah, that was that was always my argument. Like, I used to make fun of my wife all the time. Like, well, you weren't even alive last time they won it. You don't even know if it's true, if they actually did it, or if it's just, you know, a conspiracy. <laughs> my but, mom was at Kirk Gibson's home run, so – she was it happened but she but she could have been just you know lying to you just to help your feelings you know we don't know we can't (laughs) attest to that that's fair that's fair (laughs) well we'll never be able to say for sure but i am the same way i'm 29 so that's you know kind of always been my thing is i have no emotional attachment to the kirk gibson home run in the 88 world series i mean it's a nice story but i have no emotional connection so i was all my life, I've just been so tired of seeing that shit, you know, for like preseason, like opening day where they're showing like a montage, getting everyone hyped and it's all 1988 shit. I'm just like, I'm over it. I they're want to start I showing Mookie's home run now. Exactly. And I can't wait. I hope I never see Kirk Gibson's home run, I don't know, for the next decade. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm cool with seeing it every now and again, but. No, I mean, that was one thing that I think a lot of people like our age or who haven't seen 
the Dodgers win a World Series in their lifetime, that was something that was like, oh, we never have to hear about 1988 ever again. Yeah. And it's just a, a nice feeling. Yeah, and hopefully I won't really have to hear Oral Hershiser talk about it every other broadcast, which you like, know, you gotta, for him, I'm sure he's stoked on that World Series, but I'm just I'm tired of hearing about yeah, it. Yeah. I think this and one's I, a little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a little bit like a slap in the face in my like when when I when you uh, when the Dodgers in 2018 were giving out the National League championship rings, like I was yeah, like, I dude, that, I that's like that kind of like disrespect. Like I would feel like such a bitch getting that honestly if I was if I was a player. I, honestly, that's a participation trophy in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so, you, I mean, it's it's a, it's a cool memory. It's nice to put in the the mantle, but like. It's, yeah, it's you like you you get you get the hat. Like for instance, I have the retro two thousand. Oh, what side is it? The two thousand two hat. You know, you get yeah. that stuff because you because winning the division. I mean, not division. Sorry, winning uh the pennant is is an accomplishment and it's cool. You know, but it's I mean, it's just not. You you don't get a ring for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's cool to have like some memorabilia, but it's not close to the same thing. Right. You no. you should it should be distributed to the players behind closed doors. No, no one, one wants yeah, to no one needs to hear about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all we all know it happens yeah. and that's good enough. We we yeah. don't have to celebrate and, the loss of the World Series. And you guys have I mean, you guys have had a lot of heartbreak and like the only like real 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 heartbreak I I've had as a fan was 2000 was 2002. But when yeah. you're 12 years old, it doesn't I mean you care more about playing baseball in Little League than you do watching it. You know what I mean? Like I didn't even like when I was 12 years old, I didn't even realize that they they hadn't won since the fifties, like I didn't even really even know that, you know. Yeah. So like it, it it's it's not the same as an adult, and and the heartbreak that you guys had in two thousand seventeen, and I don't want to say two thousand eighteen because it was kind of it wasn't the same even when it happened before like the whole Astro scandal broke, like and it, the Red Sox too they got in trouble. There was an investigation. There was a punishment. But it it happened. Yeah, That's but a fact. It, was, it was it not was a lesser the extent. Same thing. Lesser right. extent, but it and happened. There was, there was no way the Dodgers were in that World Series, even if they didn't do whatever they did. I mean, yeah, opposite, if, if we're talking season, Astros, yeah. I mean, it, it's stupid to think that cheating like that wouldn't win one game. We didn't give you an advantage for one game, and it went to seven games. So it's it's ridiculous to think that they wouldn't have won the, uh, 17, but 18, not even close. I think 18 was so disappointing because 17 was such a disappointment and you know there was inklings about the cheating coming out and then getting there you kind of feel like it's owed to you that you're gonna win because mm -hmm. you got so fucking screwed the year before but i mean the truth of the matter is the red sox were a much better team and like eric but was you saying, didn't we know about the match. cheating until until this off season yeah for and the red sox yes What's, what's interesting for me about no everyone knew there was rumors going around about the Astros. Yeah, but there's a difference in rumors. Because for instance, if, the, if it was just rumors, I could be like, "Shut up, bitch! You lost. Like, why? Why are you talking? You're just crying. That's a completely valid, a valid, uh, you know, thought sure. of thought of thought of mine. But there's undeniable evidence that they cheated blatantly, and not like cheated like, oh, they cheated on on on. You know, one play where someone advanced a second, or, or that was not it, – it was actually on the other side of the line, so it actually wasn't foul. It wasn't like one play. It was the entire series of cheating. So it's – I don't know. It's different. I think it's for me – I think for me what was disappointing about 18 compared to 17 was I was at the 18-inning game and, like, hitting the walk-off home run like Max Muncy did and – the way that game went down, I thought the home run momentum was going to propel the Dodgers into the rest of that series. Yeah. And then just to lose in five and to lose in seven, the way we did against the Astros, it was just like taking out all the wind from our sails. It was, it was oh, yeah. crushing, but then to the way we win this year, it's like, wow. With yeah. how game four or yeah. Game four, game four went. Yeah. They and, made it a series more than once. and Because the Dodgers oh, yeah. were overwhelmingly favorite. And it wasn't like a, a a complete dominance. There was a couple times where it was like, oh, shit, dude, the Rays got it. Especially after it was like game four? Yeah, game yeah, four. Game, the crazy game four that, yeah, and gave it away. Ending. Give the Rays credit. They weren't getting a lot of credit coming into the, to the series against the Dodgers. But they were the best team in the AL 
all year. And Brandon Lau was their best player, and he just ended up having a cold streak coming into the World Series. So no one was really talking about the offense. It was more about the pitching matchups and Glasnow and Snell and all of that. So it was a much more entertaining series than I was expecting because I, just of the, the lack of hyping of the, the Rays, obviously with the Dodgers getting all the hype because they're the favorite and all of that. Yeah, right. <clears throat> you know, so before the season started, I – pick the Rays and Dodgers to go to the World Series. and I don't know okay. how many times he's going to bring that up. Oh, yeah. also – oh, so if you haven't seen, Eric, uh, in July I said the Dodgers are going to beat the Rays in six games in the World Series. So you know, I did that, not see that. Wow. That's just a feather in my cap. So you're right, Jesse. I'm never going to stop fucking saying that. So fuck you. <laughs> um, Predicting but, the first World Series you ever see as a fan, like, what is it, three months in advance? I would stick that feather in my cap every yeah, time. Absolutely. So eat a dick, Jesse. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of felt the the same way as, you know, I thought the Rays would, you know, rely heavily on their pitching throughout the whole season. But, I mean, the offense was pretty potent. And then yeah. coming in, Lau had that cold streak. And we all know what Randy Rose Randy did. I mean, he that was kid's unbelievable. stupid yeah. in the playoffs and in the World Series. And especially after game one, I, I just remember thinking to myself, because it's not something I ever want to say out loud to anyone, but after game one, I was like, I can really see this going for. I could see this being a sweep. They just didn't A lot of Dodgers fans were thinking that way. Competitive. Oh, yeah. But then, I mean, you got to give them credit. They they did make it a series, and, you know. Blake shit, Snell's a bad one, man. <clears throat> I mean, they're, they're one, however you want to look at it, one. No, you know who's a madman is that pitcher who would not blink. That guy's oh. a madman. Oh, what's, what's I can't forget. His, I forget his name. Every time, no one knows out, any of the Rays guys in the bullpen. <laughs> dude, really that, guy, that guy looked crazy, and I feel like any time he would go into his windup, they would just zoom in on his face. Oh, purposely, they like, knew it. You know, looking like a serial killer out there. It was crazy, um, but yeah, I mean, you gotta but, give them credit. They they made it a series, and mm-hmm. you know, people are gonna say Kevin Cash lost the series for them, and. I mean, that no. was a huge part of it, but he didn't lose the series. Lost I wouldn't even say that he lost the game. Uh, yeah, you're a little – well, they didn't no, end up scoring. It would be, it would be, it'd be crazy to think that the Dodgers weren't going to score at least one run, but it was definitely possible. Oh, I mean, um, it was the wrong but, choice by, by far. But, I mean, yeah, like the just, offense just, just – The analytical side, that. just old school side, there's no explaining why you would do that unless you're going just blanket third time through the order – and not looking at any of the analytical numbers besides that. Right. And that and that's kind of what – I mean, I already know what you think, Jesse. But, Eric, what do you think as far as the evolution, I mean, especially in this series, but now it seems it's kind of bleeding into every team in baseball, just the, the evolution of the analytics and kind of living and dying by them instead of, you know, the eye test and kind of going by guy's heart and just, you know, knowing your guy's. So we we had this exact discussion on my show, the Sports Kingdom show, uh, on Wednesday night when we were recording our episode. And I brought up the fact that Andrew Friedman comes from the Rays organization, from like from the Rays to the Dodgers. So both teams are clearly very analytically driven. The Rays front office collaborates with Kevin Cash. The Dodgers front office collaborates with Dave Roberts on decisions, and they come in with their plan, and they – pretty much to a T usually go with the plan that they came up with before the game. And that's what's gotten Dave Roberts in trouble. It clearly got Kevin Cash in trouble. Dodgers fans were saying that he, Kevin Cash was doing his best Dave Roberts impression when yeah. he took Blake Snell out. Dude deserves a ring. Yeah. <laughs> he deserved World Series MVP. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, my, my thinking with analytics is analytics are important to the game. They are a useful tool to the game. But when it comes to in-game decision-making, you have to leave that up to the manager and leave it up to the feel of the game. Like, you can't have a predetermined plan when you don't know what's happening, unless you're the Astros. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really my thinking is, like, analytics are a great tool to use in terms of roster building and trying to come up with a – 
strategic plan for the season on how to approach it. But I think managers and coaches in any sport need to have free reign on the decision-making in-game because the front office and analytics people aren't what, like they're not affecting the game. Coaches, mm-hmm. coaching decisions affect the game. So. Yeah. And I wonder, you know, cause I've had this thought when Dave Roberts has made some questionable pitching changes, I wonder how much influence the front office had for the Rays for that specific instance for pulling. Oh, that was a hundred percent the Rays front office influence because I don't know it seems like cash but, believes in it though like I, I think sometimes we give too much of oh the front offices are are, are 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 making that decision instead of actually the 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 manager is someone yeah, who believes he, in at and you know part of the analytics so much that that's his decision he clearly believes in it as well because he went with the decision that he went with to take Blake Snell out before seeing Mookie Betts for the third time and that was the Rays uh, organization's whole thing is they didn't want their starting pitcher to face any lineup, no matter who it was, They because that's what they were doing the whole season to get them to the World Series. They didn't want their starting pitcher to face the the opposing lineup a third time through the order. And, I mean, I think the reason why people blame the front office more than just, like, the manager on, like, going with that decision, like Jesse, you were saying, Mm. is because the manager is the inferior to the front office. Like the general manager, the president of baseball operations, those are the manager's bosses. Like you kind of have to go in line with what your boss is saying, you know? Yeah, but at the same – yeah, no, and I I, I get it. But at the same time, like for instance, like a guy like Gabe Kapler just got fired from from Philadelphia from that same front office. So like I can't imagine them being like – well, we told you what to do, and right. you did it. So we're going to fire you because we're going to get someone else who will do exactly what we do. Too. Well, just, if you can save your job. Go. Well, yeah, exactly. If you can save your job instead of someone else's, I mean, you're obviously going to try and save your yeah. job. <laughs> I guess so. I guess that makes sense. You guess so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it just... No, I, def- I, get, I definitely get what you're saying because managers should be held accountable for the decisions they make on the field, but it's like when it's coming down from the top, it's like... yeah. Who's yeah, it's really, like it's it's kind of like wait, you told me to do this, and now you're firing me for listening to you. Right. Like, then yeah. I, I feel like they would blow the cap. Of the, I mean, whoever the manager is, like for instance, Gabe Kapler would be like, "Bro, they told me to do everything, and now they're going to fire me." Dude, fuck them. But that's why you know? I think that managers should have free reign in exactly the game. And I I think it's important for a manager to be, especially in today's day and age, uh, you know, analytically driven, but there should be some times when you're looking at what you're seeing is like, wow, what's going on is special. Uh, we can't just go by uh, what's normally happening because what's happening right now isn't fucking normal. Right. So, I mean, and well, and that's I, just, I, know we're, I know we're supposed to be talking about the Dodgers in the World Series, but, I mean, look at Tony La Russa getting hired by the White Sox. I'm very skeptical of that move with him yeah. not only being able to relate to the young guy, young guys in the clubhouse, but also he wasn't really all that analytically driven, and that's kind of – why he was bounced in St. Louis when his time was up. And uh, I think it was Mahaney that take over, took over for him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he retired after winning the world series. I think he kind of went out like in, in, in a blade of gore. Like I can't get any higher than this. I, I might as well just quit. But yeah, yeah it's, too, it's, but it was also just, starting to transition around when he was. Leaving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I think the big thing with analytics, <clears throat> you know, just kind of make a last point on it is, I don't think it should be just here's the line and you just you tow that line all the way through. It should be kind of a, a guide where it's a good thing to follow, but there's always going to be room for deviations from it. But it yeah, exactly. Like, it, it just seems like now as we're kind of going further into this analytical era, era, excuse me, everyone's just live and die by it. And that's kind of it. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Sorry, Taylor just put the cat in here and now she's fucking with my webcam. <laughs> well, I mean, you also got to think of baseball, right? All, not all great baseball moments because there's a lot that are the stars and, and, and make complete sense. But a lot of baseball history is the random fucking guy who comes up who just happens to be hot and carries a team through a, po- carries a, team through a postseason. You know, that's, 
that's not something that can be on the sheet of paper, on the on the thing that comes down from the front office. That's something that's seen by the manager being like, dude, he's seeing the ball well. I mean, every every single thing he's getting a hold of is coming off the bat loud. So, I mean, if if it's always just based on that, like it's just it's just not going to work. It's not always going to work just because some of the numbers look good. If you think about it in baseball, if the numbers look good. Say someone's hitting 400 off somebody. That's fucking owning someone like crazy. I mean, that's still six times them not going through. That makes sense. Yeah. So, like, I mean, who would ever think, for instance, Dave, David Freeze? Who the fuck wanted David Freeze up there in 2011 against the card? I mean, against the <laughs> against the Cardinals. You know what I'm saying? And against yeah. against the Rangers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No one fucking thought he was going to come through twice in the same game. But that's baseball. That's baseball. Yeah. Anywho, uh, yeah, I mean, move, we we got we got to talk about a couple of things of uh, of the, this. The, we've I guess, a lot already. Yeah, yeah uh, a, a couple of uh, of the main parts of the World Series. What did you guys think of um, Margot's uh, steal of home? I thought it was dumb. I yeah, yeah that that, that I, I, mean, I, was under, up. I understand that Kershaw has a slow windup and Margot probably thought he had a chance and he had already stolen second and got to third. And I mean, I just wouldn't have taken that risk in that situation. No. With, well, with here's how hard runs are to come by in the postseason, and to be able to be on third. I mean, and they were down one at that point, right? Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah, sure but, he was trying to tie the game. Yeah. But here's the thing. He was, it was a lead off, he was a lead off triple, right? Um, or he's on third with no, no outs, right? Um, then two outs happen. Kevin Kiermeyer's up. He's not exactly known for his bat. When it's the for instance, if Mookie Betts tried to do it, I would think that's stupid because there's a bunch of guys behind him who can get on base. But if yeah. it's the Rays, I kind of like, and especially in that instance, there's two outs. He was, he's was he been stranded there. It's like, shit, I got to make something happen. And to be honest with you, it wasn't a clear-cut play. That was close. That was way too close for comfort. Like, if it was just – No, Barnes got little... him on the hand first. Right. Was... Originally, originally, I thought he was safe. And then when I went back and looked at it, I mean, it was still – Close. It was close. I, he was. Yeah, I'm was not saying that he close. was safe. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It was close. I, I'm not saying that he was safe. What I'm saying it was close, as in one little thing. Like Muncie tells him a second later, or he yeah. throws the ball because he's in a in a rush. He has to step off the mountain and throws it just a little bit higher. He could have been safe. So if that does happen, it's a completely different conversation. Of oh my gosh, it, uh, you know, baseball instincts and and this and this and this. I mean, yeah. like I said, if it's the other way around and, and your big boys are up. Why the fuck would you risk that? But when it's Kevin Kiermeyer and that raised lineup, who's raised lineup is not what got him there. Um, it's just you got to try to make some shit happen. And I, I, I kind of like the move. It obviously didn't work out, and that's baseball. Sometimes it don't work out, but I, I think it's one of those it. things too. As a as a manager, if I were Kevin Cash, I mean, I watched his post game and he he supported Margot and he backed him, but that was Margot going on his own. That was his mm-hmm. own instinct. Him thinking Kershaw was going to be, you know, too long to the mound. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's a that makes it a bigger deal to me now. Right, and that's and that's kind of why I disagree with it the most. If they told him, mm-hmm. all right, you're just going to straight, ste- you're going to straight steal because <laughs> Kershaw's coming to the plate and it's too slow. Then, I mean, that's the manager making the call. But when you're on third and like we talked about, it's so hard to score runs. I would much rather have Kiermaier – hoping to just find some grass and just bloop one out there, then you straight steal home. Yeah, but yeah. what's more likely to happen? Kevin Kiermeyer hitting a little bloop single when the dude's hitting under 200? Yes. Or a, a little bit, a li- a little bit less of a tire? Yeah, 100%. Home. I don't know, though, because it was so close. It just a li- if, 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 the, if the throw was just a little bit higher, this con- we're having the a different only, conversation. Okay, right but the only thing – okay, here, listen to this. The only thing I think that – would make it, oh, it's a genius call, is the fact that Kershaw has to step off the rubber. And, I mean, you have to give Kershaw credit. He did it so quick. Just Exactly. That's it. He but that's my point. Throws, but I'm saying if he, if he box, cool, then he's a genius. Then, you know. It, but then that means it's not a run. bad baseball move then. If it, you, can't, you can't say it's bad. It is because, because it's, unli- it's unlikely to happen. It's much so, more likely 
Kier, okay, if you're saying Kiermaier is hitting 200, that means one out of five times he's going to, you know, probably bloop one. Okay, and, and what's, what's his average against Kershaw? And Kershaw was on that night. So, I mean, th- there's also that too. I, I lefty on lefty. Uh, he's probably only faced Kershaw three times in his career, and that was Kershaw's first game pitching in the World Series. <laughs> I think that now finding out that Margot went on his own, I think it honestly makes it worse because I agree. He, he literally made the decision for his team. That's making a decision for your team. Yeah. Right. And how and do you it feel did, if you're it did, it, You took the bat right out of his hand when you have a runner on true. third. But, you, but what did you also show him, though? I mean, there's no outs, and you're on third, and they can't get you in and two at-bats, and then all, now the third at-bat's coming up like, fuck, dude, I got to make some – like – if there was one out, if there was if there was no outs, I would have been a completely different conversation because it's like it's a lot more likely for them to get the bat on the ball out of the infield at least for you to go home. But when you have to get a hit, there's Kiermaier's struggling because I mean I'm not really even struggling; he's just not that great of a hitter. I I, I just feel like it's not a, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I I thought it was a a gutsy play. It was a baseball play. I just don't think it was the dumbest thing in the world. I don't know. I think it was a bonehead play, personally. Well, and I think you because I, the you... way I look, <laughs> the way I look at it, if Kershaw's taking that long, and you can get such a huge secondary lead, dude. If but he ball, did. But I'm saying if that ball bounces, you're scoring easily. Yeah, and not only that too. I'm not sure if you saw the the shot of him running. He hesitated for a second. Yeah. So if he didn't hesitate and the throw was a little. Uh, I mean, I can go on forever. I mean, we're we're just talking guess about the what, same boys. shit. And I, and I guess what, it. boys? What's that? What happened? The Dodgers are World Series. Champions. Yeah, I was. That's like, all that matters, <laughs> baby. It doesn't matter. It didn't. It didn't happen. So it is what it um, is. To to dissect all, all, I guess, the headlines of this World Series, because um, we already went through that. Oh, it's so great, and I and I get it. Bask it up. I understand. But to go to 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 Canley Jansen for a second, the not backing up of of that play. And then to hear what he said afterwards in his interview, how did you guys take that? Pissed off. Yeah, I didn't like it. it I didn't just, like it. It, it just seems like he was making excuse, not even making excuses. He was just completely disregarding the question. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but do you think I he's a closer? Say, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, here. no, no, no. I, I, I don't think he's the closer going forward to answer that question mm. uh, that you were about to say. Uh, but, um, we're just right here i get you i mean listen that that's for next season but i mean i didn't like his comments after but mm-hmm. with the way he responded to not going in to close out the world series and win it for the team and how happy he was for julio and him saying he felt like he was finally a true Dodger now that he won a World Series, even though he wasn't on the mound getting the last out. Mm -hmm. I think that really kind of takes away what happened from game four. Because game four, it's right after the game, heated the moment, still very emotional. Like, And you could tell everybody on the field was like, what the fuck what just the happened? fuck just yeah mm-hmm. everyone so in the it, living room was just thinking what the fuck just happened yeah and so <laughs> realistically i don't know if he had time to really fully digest what happened and what could have been done differently about that play to maybe have a different outcome but with how he responded and how humble and uh, happy he was for his other teammates who were out there when it counted to get the w for the for the dodgers i think yeah. that it's like Mm. At the end of the day, I'm always going to love Kenley. Mm. And he's – I mean, I've defended him for a long time, and especially this season. I still wanted him out there. And it really wasn't until game four when I said, leave Gratterall in on my Twitter before they brought in Jansen. And it was just like yeah, – Yeah, you know, the the one thing that really kind of baffled me this whole postseason is I really don't understand why – you know, even if Gratterall comes in and only pitches a third of an inning, two thirds of an inning, and he gets through the inning, he they never send him back out there. That's got to be what we were talking about earlier. It's the analytics and the collaboration. Mm-hmm. But it it's just so. But they didn't even. They didn't even look. It's not like he was getting loud out, giving up loud outs. 
He was no. he was pretty dominant. He was dealing. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was hundred weak and, weak ass contact. And the thing about it is, as far as the analytics go, I don't know how they have the analytic numbers for that because they never let him do it. Yeah. And I mean, there's sometimes he's pitching two thirds of an inning and threw six pitches. I think that's more of a numbers of of, of money. I think that's more of a money numbers thing. Like for instance, oh, like, I, I feel like we can, have so much invested in this player. We need to be in Canley, so he needs to be our guy. We can't we can't just give Grouder all that position because he hasn't earned it as far as time. Where Canley has earned it as far as time. Well, and also let's be real, Dave Roberts has been known in these postseasons up until this postseason really for chasing narratives. He wanted Clayton out there getting the last outs to send him to the World Series. He wanted to give Kenley his chances to close out games in big moments. Yeah. yeah. And they ended up backfiring on him up until this year because, I mean, when he took Clayton out early in that one game, we were like, why are you taking him out early? He's dealing. But then it's like, what happens all the other – all the past times he left him in too long? Mm. Yeah. So. I'm know. always a fan of, of, of leaving leaving starting pitching, and that kind of gets me in trouble. But um, how, how talking about Dave Roberts, if you were to give him a grade on how we did this postseason, what what would you give him? This postseason? Yeah, this postseason. I'm giving him an I'm giving him an A plus for the end result. Yeah, absolutely. and that's all that matters. I, I feel was, like I feel like Dodgers won in spite of him more than he helped the Dodgers, in my opinion. Well, I think. I mean, having, he's had a couple of good games, but that's it. it was having a loaded game, roster right? like the having a loaded roster like exactly. the Dodgers do, it's it kind of makes his job easy. And it, exactly. it, I'm not in any way saying that his job is easy at all, because managing a major league baseball team is it's a, a hard job, a job. Yeah, but in terms of the job, it's, it makes yes. it very easy when you have. He has a lot easier of a job yeah. than Kevin Cash does. Yeah, and especially when we had the DH this, the whole year. No. I mean, right, and that, really that's a whole other aspect of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But for me, giving Dave Roberts an A plus grade, it also has to do with me being a Laker fan, and it's like championship or bust mentality type thing. And it's like, even though the the Dodgers had never won a championship since 1988, this year was championship or bust, pandemic or no pandemic, because of what happened in 17 and 18, and the way we lost to the Nationals in the first round last year. This year was mm. championship or bust. Yeah. Because I, look, at, look at all the free agents that we now have. There's seven, I believe, seven key guys on this team that are now free agents. And Dodgers, Dodgers players themselves, they were talking about how this is that core group of like 10 guys that were on the 17 and 18. That, this was like their last yeah. dance. Yeah. So this this year really was championship or bust. And Dave Roberts gets an A plus for me for winning a World Series. I gotta say, oh, I can't wait to this. Hear this. My, <laughs> I, I mean, you've heard me say it before, Tyler, and I'm gonna say it again. Uh, I mean, obviously, it, it happened, so it, it's 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 not a big thing. But for a fan base to be championship or bust, and I mean, I don't like we talked about before this podcast um, started. I'm re- very new to watching basketball. I've only watching it for three years, so um, I, I can't even comment on. I feel like, but in baseball. To be a fan base that says championship or bust, you don't deserve to get a World Series because what? it just that just makes it seem like winning a championship is so one dimensional and so there's a formula to win. What's the point of the season? What's the point to of win a, a the point? The point exactly. You, you want your players to think that championship or bust, but a fan base to say it's a waste of a season if they don't I'm, win the World Series. That's I'm talking in general terms of this specific season with the Dodgers and this team. I'm not saying about, it's always okay. championship or bust with the Lakers. Well, I just I hear Dodgers. that a lot from Dodger fans. So if for a fan to say that, to say you deserve a World Series because you have the best roster in baseball, oh, I don't, that doesn't I don't happen. Say that. No, you don't. I don't say that. Yeah, you don't. Deserve I think maybe I'm just here. I'm. But that's. But that's. But that's what a lot of people. That's what the narrative is with a lot of Dodger fans. I mean, I'm not just making it up. No, I'm. It's when I say championship or bust. That's not me saying the Dodgers are guaranteed to win the championship. I'm saying no. The goal is to win a championship. Oh yeah. But oh, if yeah. it doesn't happen, this season is a bust. For players or for fans? In it's general. For uh, it's for everybody. It's all inclusive. So you're saying that if, for instance, if 
if the Dodgers would have made it to the World Series and lost in seven games, the Dodger fans should be like, that was a waste of a season. Is that what yes. I'm saying? Yeah. That is a shitty way of thinking. You should be happy for a pennant. And if you, if it's, oh, you're only going to be happy for this about oh, participation trophies. Who, and yeah. You no, exactly. Celebrate no, 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 the, pennant, I, the pennant ring. Oh, I, I completely, but what I'm saying is to be mad and be like, that was a waste of a season. Come on, bro. Okay. It's, 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 there's but no this, magic. There's no magic formula this, in baseball. There's, there's no a magic between formula. A bust and a waste of a season. Right. You're taking this too little. Is there though? There's still going to be, you know, huge. No, there's still going to be moments, yeah. positives. Of course, of course there's going to be disappointment. I mean, everyone's disappointed when their team's kicked out of the playoffs. I'm not, I'm not saying not disappointed, but to be like, oh, heads got to roll, like fans demanding that this, they have to tear down and, and fire everyone if they don't win a World Series. Come on, bro. That's, 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 that's ridiculous. Or at least that's, that's not that, what I was saying. I mean, I, I know that. I know that you didn't say those words, but when I'm hearing bust, it's, it, it was a waste of a seat. Like, I just – I don't know what that means then, I guess. Maybe yeah, we're just having definitions. Okay. Well, hold, definitions. On, hold, on, hold, on. hold on. If you're talking in terms of waste of a season, mm-hmm. – I put in – let's say I'm a player. I put in all this work in the offseason. Yeah, I'm not talking about players, though. Players, I understand. You, wanna, you want your players to have that mentality. I'm talking about fans that are saying if they don't win a World Series, it's a waste of a season and heads need a fucking roll. That's – you don't deserve it. Well, you I don't think, deserve I think, I think fans will say heads – need to roll or heads don't need to roll depending on the situation and how exactly like if if there's an argument yes but i've i mean i'm also maybe reading into just random people that you see on twitter but i've seen things like fire andrew freeman i've seen you also have to take into account that i don't know maybe half the people on our twitter timeline don't know what the fuck they're talking about that's that's what that's what that's that's exactly (laughs) what i'm talking about but at the same time that's also a narrative though when multiple people say it like, for instance, I mean, you can't no, blame I mean, a front were, office from getting kicked out of the playoffs. If you want to blame Roberts for a decision, yes, I get that. You want to blame, you know, Cody Bellinger for being not exactly this postseason, but in past, he's been very cold during the postseason. You want to blame him and, and talk about him? That's fine. But oh, to, to like, blame a, a front office for, for, for not – for not winning a World Series, they have nothing to do with that. They, all they could do is put the best team possible. But that's contradicting how? what we're talking how? about. Because we're talking about how Kevin Cash going to get Blake Snell out of the game comes from the top down. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a specific decision. We were talking, I'm not talking about specific decisions. We're talking about if they lose, just period. Right. Well, that that's ridiculous. If you have a valid, if you have a valid, like for instance, if we find out that that's exactly what, because we don't know who, who, who made that decision? We can have our opinions on it was the front office, but maybe Kevin Cash just really believes in the third time through the order, and it's 100% on Kevin Cash. Sure. I, I think you know what I mean? Kinda, we can kind of put it this way and put an end to it. If the Dodgers would have <laughs> lost the World if they would have lost the World Series this year, it would not be the front office's fault. Look what no. they went out and did. They got Mookie Betts. They got Blake Trinan. They got all these pieces. So as a fan, if you say that, you better have some fucking good ideas and some hard evidence to back it up because what you more, better put your application yeah. in to be GM to replace yeah. whoever you're trying to get fired. Right. So. I mean, yeah. what, more, at, what more could you do? You, no, you can't, you can't go I, spend three, three hundred million dollars on a team or what a, in, in the short. Yeah. Season. Yeah. yeah. You can't. Well, I mean, and here's the thing with that. I don't like the Dodgers. Like I've seen a bunch of people say, Oh, the Dodgers bought this championship because they traded for Mookie Betts and then signed him to a whole big deal and all of that. So fucking stupid. And, I mean, more than half of that team has come from the Dodgers farm yeah. system. Yeah, we just it's just it's just players. an old narrative that people yeah, we take people it, we don't take care of on. our players. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 an old narrative that people don't keep up on. For instance, in 2012, that, that would that, that would have been that would have been true if they made the playoffs in 2012 when they did all that shit and yeah. and they were successful at it. Then yes, you could say that. the thing is is people will hear that narrative one time because it's true and then check out of sports and come back and be like, oh, same shit because their payroll's high when they're not watching every year and seeing every single fucking year the Dodgers have to have a 500 top prospects and three dudes fucking hitting 20 home runs. Ryan Seager, Cody Ballinger hit, winning back-to-back rookie of the year. Ex- exactly. And exactly. following that up with an MVP. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and, I think the two biggest guys on the payroll 
that weren't homegrown talent or that we didn't get, you know, for a non-roster spring training invite or Blake Trinan and Mookie Betts. Obviously Mookie. Yeah. And it, I, I was literally David thinking who, who else? Well, and, yeah, and well, Dave Price didn't play. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying if you include yeah. him in that. Oh, right. yeah. But I was trying David, to – honestly, yeah. I was trying to think of who was – because obviously Mookie's one, but I was I was having a hard time thinking who would be number Personal. two. David Price. Oh, well, no, but he's homegrown. David yeah. Price oh, okay. is even that homegrown. expensive yeah. because Boston retained half a salary. So yeah, too. <laughs> that argument's true. invalid what, there too. One thing I, I do want to say, um, I've seen people say things like, oh, Mookie Betts was the only missing piece. That was, that was it. We just need a Mookie. I think – kind of that undervalues how big of a role Mookie played on this team. Because if you really think about it, I mean, if, if we were to tell you Cody Bellinger's regular season stats, Max Muncy, how he, I mean, they were all, they were hitting bombs, but how, how they were very inconsistent. You would be like, Oh shit. They're not, I mean, they're, they're best players not do. Obviously Seager's probably the best player about the beginning of the year. You couldn't really bank on it because of his off time, but to, to say your best, some of your best dudes are going to kind of have slump years, you would be kind of worried. I oh, mean, yeah. if it wasn't for Mookie, fuck, dude, the Padres might have won that, won the, won the division. No, I can't understate enough how important Mookie Betts yeah. was to this team, and not only just for his on field contributions. It's he's won a ring. He know like, yes, he was part of that yeah. team, but it's like he knows people the don't value that stuff. He, the experience that he had during that 2018 season helped so much with this Dodgers team just mm-hmm. because he's been there before. He can mm-hmm. help guys get through that moment kind of thing. And not only that, I mean, all the shit that he did with Austin Barnes. I mean, dude, everyone wanted Austin Barnes' fucking head on a stake in the middle of the season. I mean, well, the shit that he did with Austin and Barnes. And then everybody and- wanted – Everybody wanted Austin Barnes behind the plate in game four. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, and yeah. Austin I, Barnes is the one that started the rally in game six. Yeah. There's, so, there's, yeah. there's so many things that could have changed this narrative. If, you know, for instance, if the Rays took it after that, that game four explosion, if they would have, like, won a couple games, that would have been, like, the turning point. But now that they won, honestly, it's it's something to talk about on, on shows like this, right? But yeah. who the fuck cares, honestly? Yeah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But, but I think that just, you know, just like Eric was saying, like, you can't – I mean, Mookie Betts, besides David Price, who, you know, we all know didn't mm-hmm. play, he's the only person on that squad that has a ring. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, you know, I don't know this for sure, but I'm sure after game four, he's saying shit to people. Joe Kelly, too. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, Joe Kelly. Joe, that's right. Joe Kelly was such a non factor in this World Series <laughs> that I completely forgot. As I'm I think wearing, I pitched you know, as many like eddings in the World Series, maybe. And I'm still deep down mad at him about Hanley. So, I mean, well. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> deep down, deep down, deep somewhere down. in there, I still, there's still I feel a fire like, burning with that. I don't know. I, I feel like maybe he might be forgiven at this point. Oh, um, he was for sure forgiven once he hit uh, Correa. Exactly, yeah. Um, just, I guess. Closing. What? What's? What's the? Well, wait, what's the I most memorable? For you. I got a question for you guys. Where were you guys like watching the game? So, let me tell you about it. Uh, <laughs> well, most most games of the World Series and the Atlanta series, I was do it, watching it with friends, socially distanced outside, on like a projector that's, or a TV. That, that's cool. We were doing that. Um, also because I, I'm a smoker and I was definitely chain smoking during a lot of just a lot of these. Piece of shit person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm a garbage human being. But game <laughs> six, and I did this for you know game seven of the Astro series. Made sure to watch it with my dad and my mom because yeah, you know, we they've I mean they've been waiting 29 or 32 years. Also, I've been yeah. waiting 29. Yeah. Uh, so I was able to watch it with my dad, girlfriend, and mom. So that was that was a neat experience, you know. Yeah, definitely. I, I finally finally got to do it, and it was nice. Yeah. Mm. Jesse, I you were, you I, were I was a just a bunch of Dodger fans. Uh, we, oh, I live in Southern California. I mean, I'm, I'm married to it and to a huge Dodger family. So uh, I was either watching it uh, at at home with uh, 
my wife, brother-in-law, and like if he might have a friend or, or my um, my brother-in-law, um, my my sister and brother-in-law would come over, and or we'd be over their house. So it would be like those same five or six people. And then I was always fucking grilling. So <laughs> I would just like to point out that you were quoted. Uh, I saw our our mutual oh, fuck. friend Jordan uh, posted, and you were oh, yeah. as saying. <laughs> I'm not even a baseball fan. Or I no, don't that's how like I said. Baseball. I don't even like baseball. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a I'm a big bowling guy now. We're actually gonna. This is a slow, soft transition into a a bowling podcast. Salty motherfucker. <laughs> where, where were Where were you watching? Where were you, Eric? So, I got pretty lucky. I was actually at the AM five seventy. LA sports radio station. Cause I oh, wow. work, I work for iHeartMedia. I work for KFI AM 640. And then this Dodger mm-hmm. season, uh, I was helping out AM 570. I interned for Petros and money and uh, Rogan and Rodney on uh, AM 570 mm-hmm. when I was in college. And then I started working for iHeartMedia after. And so during this season, I started working every Tuesday night Dodger game. And so when we found out there was going to be a game six on Tuesday night, I was like, well, looks like I'm working. Um, So it was honestly, it was pretty special being there. And I honestly, yeah. Got to go through all the emotions of everything, huh? I I started crying in the studio, man. It it was, (laughs) I I start. I'm I'm surprised I haven't cried through this. I I cried on my (laughs) podcast. Yeah. Uh, Hey. It, it's fine. You want us to edit out some crying or a spotlight on you crying? We're, we're fine with that, baby. So we, were you? That's the best thing about with, sports, dude. With with Charlie and Rick, were they? No. So Charlie and uh, Charlie and Rick, they were at the they were at Dodger Stadium, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I believe they were at Dodger Stadium, or one was at home and one was at Dodger Stadium. I can't remember which. Um, but they they basically were set up with remote broadcasting systems to where they could call the games remotely while the teams were away and all of that. Right. Um, but I was, so basically they feed it for, they feed the feed from Dodger stadium through a satellite to the radio station. And that's how we get it on the air. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was at like the main control, like radio station where it was getting broadcast from, but I wasn't with Rick and Charlie and all of them. So it was literally just me. and. I mean, <laughs> dude, I, I'm and I'm not I'm not talking shit because I would be doing, dude, I would be screaming it from the rooftops. So, dude, it's continue. One of the it's one of the coolest things for me about this World Series is that I got to work the game that they won. Mm-hmm. Like they they won it, the game that I worked and like 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 uh, Tyler was saying, he got to watch it with his family. I was lucky enough; I got to watch game two even though they lost i got to watch game two of the world series with my grandfather that was the first world series game we'd ever watched together we didn't get the chance to to watch uh a game together in 17 or 18 because he lives in orange county and i live up in la kind of thing Hmm. um but it was his birthday on game two so i made sure to to go down and watch game two with him but being at the radio station for game six is it's something I'll remember forever. And I mean, yeah. I was going to remember where I watched the game. Exactly. No yeah. what, right. but, but it's special. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I got to intern for the station. I got to work uh, for the 2018 world series for the station as a part of working for iHeart. And so it's just, I mean, it was pretty surreal. Did you, did you participate in any uh, extracurricular activities after we won, or did you just go home and go to bed? Hey, Eric, Eric, just so you know, we could edit shit out if you want to do some stuff off the record. Did you, you burn any about. cars is what we're really <laughs> – <Yeah. laughs> no. Make sure no. you say your driver's license number and social security. He said uh, ho- hookers and cocaine. That's where, <laughs> what my night was. No, I, um, I came home, and I had, like I said, the two bottles of champagne ready for me. Mm-hmm. And um, – I popped a bottle and videotaped it, put it out on my social media because that's exactly what I did for the Lakers. And was like, the Dodgers just did it. I have to, I have to do it for, for them. And, I mean, now that I'm of age, I'm, I can do that now anytime I want. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when, when my team wins a championship. But, um, yeah, I just I pop one bottle and then I drank the other bottle. So <laughs> what? Let's do a – I want to do a, a soft, subtle question to you real quick. Where's uh, – when you were um, – Talking about Lakers and, and, and Dodgers, who what's what's like your number one team? 
Like like so basketball. Were, or, I mean, basketball is my favorite sport. Exactly. Like, okay. Ba- basketball is my bread and butter, but I mean, Lakers and Dodgers are one A, one B to me. Like, okay. there's no yeah, like, very there's close. No, there's no ranking either one of them. It's like they're equal. Like okay, this, that's very respectable. They are my um, like. I mean, it's I count them for all my favorite teams. It's like there's no favorite. Like I like mm. one more than the other. I go just as hard for all of my teams. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's a lot of time. Um, to to yeah. both of you guys to, to to continue on on just being sappy, stupid sappy sports fans like we are. Who was the first like when when the last out happened? Who was the first person that popped in your mind? Whether it be you know players that you followed your entire life or even family members who that, that, that just brought you into fandom or, or whatever, who was the first person that popped into your mind to both of you? Oh, I mean, I didn't have just one person. I had a bunch of people. I mean, my grandpa for one, um, mm. cause he, he's like really what he, he got me into my love of sports and like, mm-hmm. he, he taught me all about it. And like, um, yeah, my, my grandpa was probably the first person that I thought of, but in terms of like Dodgers, I mean, Sean Green's my favorite baseball player of all time because he was the first Jewish athlete I ever looked up to. And he played for my home team and he played for the Dodgers. And he actually went to like the high school uh, that the local high school that uh, my grandparents live near. My mom went to that high school. My uncles went to that high school before Sean Green, but my grandpa got to call Sean Green's high school games as oh, wow. like the, the announcer for the high school. Cause he was the soccer coach at the time. So, um, yeah, I mean, Sean Green has been my favorite baseball player of all time because of not only the connection to my family, but also he was the first Jewish athlete that I ever looked up to. Yeah, that's huge. Um, Tyler? For me, it was – I mean, it was definitely my dad. Like I said, I mean, we watched it together, and, you know, we definitely had a, a good hug and maybe some uh, teary eyes. Uh, <laughs> but then, but then I, th- I definitely thought about my grandmother who passed away – 12 years ago 11 years ago um because her and i used to watch baseball all the time and i would call her and we would talk baseball and i mean these are like the i mean for all the way from like the brett butler days when i was like six years old (laughs) just like loved baseball and like Uh when gary sheffield was on the team you know all the way to when we were losing in the nlcs to the phillies because that's when she passed away so that was Mm. I don't know. I mean, you know my religious beliefs. I'm not at all. <laughs> my religious <laughs> or lack of. Lack yeah. thereof, yeah. But, I mean, it we're was, just opposite. Me and you are just opposite. Total opposites. Um, no, but it, it was Wide just a nice thought to, to have. You know, it was just yeah. a nice way to reflect on some childhood memories. And as far as players, I didn't really think about it all too much. I mean. It's it, more it's, of a family thing. Yeah, it, it's neat. I'm sure for players and, you know, my favorite Dodger of all time is Cesar Asturias. Um, a bobblehead of his in my bedroom. I, I only brought out the champions, but I, I got a Cesar Asturias bobblehead got, in my bedroom. I got my Cesar Asturias signed card and signed ball right over there. I, That's I awesome. That That's awesome. Um, he was just – he was a slick shortstop. But I think he's kind of detached from all, you know, the guys that put in years and years and years, like – Matt Kemp, yeah. Ethier, Russell Martin. I mean, Adrian Gonzalez. Yeah, yeah exactly. Those, those guys. But yeah. you know, I'm sure. I'm sure they're happy. It's it's a bummer we never got one with them. But you know, it is what it is. We got one now, so yeah. <laughs> but and, no, like Tyler, I want to. I, I just want to add on to what you were saying about the whole family aspect, and we were talking about it on on my show. Baseball is such a generational sport, and really, Absolutely. I mean, sports in general sports in general are generational because you really, if you think about it, a lot of people, how they became fans was they root for who their dad rooted for, their grandpa exactly. rooted for. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I've gone to so many baseball games and, and Dodger games, really. I mean, those are, I've been a couple of angel games, but the Dodgers, like I, I would go to games with my family and my grandpa. And like, yeah. one thing I think why the city of Los Angeles, um, really felt this championship compared to the Lakers championship. Like I said on my show, like this Dodgers championship in 2020 means more than the Lakers 2020 championship because I never saw it. Like saw a Dodgers world championship before that was my sixth Lakers championship that I've seen. Right. But 
the impact in the community that, that the Dodgers have, we, we talked about it on the show, the ticket prices, the affordability of being able to go to the games and see your favorite players in person, the Dodgers averaging three, four million fans in attendance each year, being at the top of the league each year. That's why this championship, I think, meant so much to a lot of people on top of all of the generational stuff. Years, where right, it was yeah. passed down to family, like <laughs> through families, generation to generation, and then mm. the waiting of 32 years or yeah. however long it's been since you've been alive. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And some of the stuff I saw in our Twitter timeline – that just, you know, I mean, made me super sad, but it was also, you know, it was just bittersweet, I guess. It's people posting pictures of like, you know, here's Grandma me and my brother stuff. at the game last year. And unfortunately he passed away this year. And, like, uh-huh. yeah, you know, like I'm sure he'd be so excited. And it's like, fuck man, like it, that, that's tough. But uh-huh. like, you know, that championship means just a little bit more to those people. And, oh yeah, totally. You know, I mean, I'm sure every city every city in the united states of america could use a championship this year because this year has fucking sucked mm-hmm. yeah but you know having two i i think it just goes a long way for people's psyche you know yeah. i mean it's been and a to be a repeat year. of 88 yeah. to be a repeat of 88 and 88 being the year that the last time the dodgers won a world series but also the lakers winning a, a championship the same year yeah. that whole storyline is pretty cool too yeah, There's a lot of storylines, man. Uh, I mean... That's what's yeah. great about sports, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. That's the... That's and, the that's, and, and that's and that's why people get so fucking emotional, dude. I've I've cried over sports. Like, even... I have the, the Bruce Bochy retirement thing right behind me. Dude, I, I was fucking crying in front of my wife's family when that shit happened. I bet. Like, it doesn't even I have bet. to be, like... It doesn't even have to be, like, world... Like, dude, Matt Cain's perfect game. Like, I got fucking teary-eyed. Like, yeah. it's just, dude, like... I- I it's, cried it's, at Kobe's last game. Like, not even, yeah, like, forget everything else. Like, just his last game playing. Just a yeah. meaningless game against Utah in yeah. April. That <laughs> exactly. he goes out and scores 60 fucking That's points. so like, stupid. Well, it's, I mean, yeah, I mean, dude, when the Kings won the first Stanley Cup and the second one, you know, my dad's yeah. from North Dakota and Minnesota, so hockey was a huge thing for us growing up. And – you know, that was their first one. So him and I being able to see it together, I mean, shit. I cried like yeah. a bitch. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's just, people. Exactly. Oh, man. And we do we can freaking – we're going super long. There's a couple <laughs> things I did yeah. want to freaking uh, pop off on really quick. We just rapid fire them off. Um, Let's go. Kershaw, your thoughts, Kershaw, go. I think I'll, you to, 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 light, to lighten up the mood, maybe I'll go. go. Let me interrupt First. you real quick. Though. Uh, let me interrupt you. Shut up, everyone. Everyone's like, oh, I feel good for Kershaw. Like, Giants fans, it's kind of pissing me off. Like, ah, oh, fuck Kershaw. Go uh, for it. I mean, I get it as a, as a Giants fan. If, I, I if, have, I was if, if he was on any other too. team, if he was on any other team, I'd be happy for him. But go ahead. I, yeah. It's on so, brand. Listen, Kershaw, greatest pitcher of this generation. No doubt about it. Hands down. Don't care what anybody says. That ring solidifies it. Monkey off his mm. back. No, none of that postseason woes matters anymore. He's a world champion now and forever. Mm. That's all that matters. And with Does the way it that change Fox, if, he, if he fucks up next postseason, though, do you think? No, I don't give a fuck. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I like that. The way that Fox got him on that camera angle coming out of the bullpen and him jogging out slowly, arms raised, tears coming down his cheeks. It was just beautiful. Great. Just beautiful. Picture perfect. Next, what do you think about the Justin Turner thing that COVID celebrating with everything should have? God damn it. Ben, he should have. <sighs> just just real quick line. Um, I agree with what Trevor, do you, I mean, Bauer. I, 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 I don't, I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to, I feel like putting my take is just going to be a hater giant guy, but like so uh, what do you guys think i get that he should have been more cautious and should have stayed isolated and yes he should have 100 percent. but the facts are he didn't and i agree with trevor bauer he is not the only one to blame for this the league has some responsibility in this with the way the bubble was handled if they were supposed to be in a bubble environment why did they allow eleven and a half thousand fans into that stadium correct if um yeah, I mean it's 
you would have had to fight me in that scenario to not let me back on that field if I was just I, I, it's it's really as simple I, as that. I don't think he should he should get all the blame for for I don't think he should get really any of the blame for getting Kobe. It could have been an accident. We don't know what happened unless it comes right. out he did something stupid. But if you know you have it, I feel like you should be in. People have been missing multiple yes. crazy yes. things in their life. You should it's, you should suck up. That's just my opinion. But I I, no, I, I you get I it. completely agree. I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, he should have taken it more seriously, but mm -hmm. the league should have also taken it more seriously as well. Correct. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> like we're saying, facts are facts. He went out there. We can't change that. I thought it was irresponsible. Um, yeah. I don't know if either of you saw on the Rich Eisen show, he did about a 10 minute kind of rant on it. And I thought, no, I, I didn't actually. He, he hit all the points pretty well. The, the thing that, the thing that gets me the most is in the photo, he's sitting right next to David Robert, Dave Roberts, who is a cancer survivor. And then you have yeah. someone like Kenley who already had COVID, who has that heart condition. So in that regard, it's pretty, it, it bothered me. And then you see him come back into the dugout and he's hugging Jock. He's hugging Barnes. They're not wearing masks. It, it just seemed pretty irresponsible. But then, you know, MLB deserves a fair share of the blame, not only for the bubble stuff, but you saw the Dodgers, they all flew home today. Yeah. Turner, Turner stayed. He didn't. Right. He wasn't on the team flight. But but here's the thing: is he everyone tested negative? So what? the The incubation period, you know, can be one to five days. Right. All those that might have just been like a cesspool for a little bit on the plane. I get it. You know, and now I, I'm sure. And now they're being told then, to all self isolate. At, now right. they're back in LA for two weeks. Right. I'm sure by the time the weekend comes, there's going to be another one. And you yeah. know, but what will we find out about it? I'm sure Fox is going to get in trouble for releasing that Justin tested positive. Right. And that's, and that's some, something I saw that someone made a good point. That's a HIPAA violation. So there, yeah, there's just that's, a whole bunch report, of shit that reporters, went wrong. Report, like reporters you, shouldn't be saying who has COVID and who doesn't. That's, that's unless it's medical authorized. information. Yeah, right. exactly. How do you not have... We went over that with the Alex Sickerson have, stuff in the beginning of the season. If you have his test coming back inconclusive, how do you not have rapid tests... Well, how do you let him play in general? Yep. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But, that, but that's what I'm saying. You have it. You should have the rapid test for that instance. So if someone comes back positive or inconclusive, you can give them two, three more rapid tests just to make sure. Did you see? Yeah. Did you read the Jeff Passan article with, that had the timeline of I did. what happened? Yes. So I mean, yeah. So basically, he got tested on Monday. Those results came back inconclusive. He got tested again on Tuesday, the tests, the tests that were being delivered to the lab in Utah that Major League Baseball was using on Tuesday came late. They found out that the inconclusive test happened in the second inning of game six. Right. Then they reordered like the Tuesday test to get rapid tested, and they didn't find that out until the seventh inning. As soon as they found out, they called the Dodgers and were like, hey, you got to pull them. So they pulled him immediately. Yeah. And so. But th I yeah. Mean, but that I, I think the question of why you don't have the rapid tests. The well, it was a complete. Rapid test. My co-host, Tyler Pachoki, he, he put it perfectly. It was complete operational failure on yeah. everybody's part. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and showing up late. Yes. Uh, the, him being allowed to play on an inconclusive test in general. Uh, him coming back out there, even though he had been around the team and the other team the entire day in the clubhouse, out of the clubhouse, on the field, in the dugout, all of that. So it's like complete yeah. and utter operational failure on yes. a lot of people's parts. On, yeah. on on the information, correct, a lot a lot of blame deserves to be on MLB, but I think the the more questions about him knowing and still going out there. and He should have stayed isolated. He, he, he should have stayed isolated. And I don't want to beat up on Justin too much because he's a good dude. He does a lot he's of good the stuff for – of this for, team. Yeah, but not not just that. I, I'm talking about just like on 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 a personal level and the things that he oh, does, the stuff that the yeah. stuff that he does for Children's I've, Hospital. I've and, never met a celebrity like him. Yeah, um, it was, well, it was I've, I've never met him before yeah. in my life. But especially for a someone like me, judgment. who 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 has a, a crazy heart for for Children's Hospital, who's affected me in my life personally for for a while. Um, um, the stuff that he does for for those kids is incredible, and I don't want to be like he's a shitty person. I don't want that to be the narrative, but yeah. 
I think it was a shitty decision that he yeah, should have done. And I think, I think, I hope, and I pray that no one else gets infected and that it's, it's, it's all taken care of. And we I'm can bring it's a false positive. That. Cause realistically yeah. that's a possibility. Oh, it is. I mean, to inconclusive to, to negative, I think it's less likely, but I completely agree with you. I, 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 I hope that with everything that I have. So, yeah. um, but yeah, man, um, Thank you so much for coming on, Eric. I no, know we went super fucking late. Um, it's all good. I hope to have you again soon. And um, uh, maybe next time you come on, the Dodgers don't win the World Series, and I don't have to be depressed. So um, <laughs> We can talk about the me. next time the Giants and Dodgers play each other. I can come on for rivalry week. Okay, <laughs> that'd be great. That, that, would make, that would make my day. Even though it won't mean much because you guys suck, but it's whatever. <laughs> Farhan said we're going to make the playoffs next year, okay? Yeah, Farhan so shut up. Things. Yeah, whatever. All right, thanks, Eric, man. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you later, and thanks for coming on, bro. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. As always, this episode was brought to you by Renovation Candle Company, where you can save 20% on your entire order using the promo code BENCHES for fall candles, holiday candles. Uh, you can't use the promo code for this item, uh, but they are selling 2020 World Series champion Dodger Blue candles. So make sure you get on that because they're only there for a limited time. And from the Giants' side, I would like to take the second to congratulate absolutely no one. You could suck a dick. Uh, to celebrate the Dodgers winning the World Series, we are going to be doing a giveaway package. We're going to be doing two of them containing one copy of the Los Angeles Times, including the sports page. So you get basically two papers that you get a frame and a 2020 World Series champion Dodger candle from Renovation Candle Company. If you want to win, make sure you go follow us at Twitter at Benches Cleared P. There's going to be a chance to win there. And then also a chance to win on our Instagram. That's Benches Cleared Podcast. Make sure you like the post and tag three friends. And on Twitter, make sure you repost it. And we'll announce the winner next week. Yeah, be follow, be, uh, make sure to subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting platform and on YouTube. Thank you for listening. We're going to be doing a giveaway next week, too. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we're going to do both sides uh, to make sure to, to thank both of you guys, both fans, for listening to us. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us this season. We hope you continue to listen to us in the off season, and we will see you guys next week. <laughs>